Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well, or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and I'm here with David Kirkpatrick. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, doing pretty good. You know, it's March 21st. Spring is here. It's still cold. Shall they tell us? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would have been. It would be nice if it was a, a little bit more springy. But and, and we've had a few warm, warmer days. But uh, it, it's finally maybe turning the corner, getting, getting out of here and getting, getting warm. I'm ready for some warm, uh, warm weather. Um, anyway, um, some frontier wrap up. I guess is where we're going with this. We've we've been talking about the frontier. Right. Oh, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been over a year at least that we've really kind of focused on uh, the frontier, uh, people involved in it, uh, from uh, you know James Harrod to um, Michael Stoner. I mean, we've tried to try to cover as much as we can. We had a few guests on, and so forth. So in this episode, we really are just kind of going to wrap it up, uh, talk about uh, some kind of the big things that we kind of. Uh, connect to, feel about the frontier, and just um, uh, move on after that. So, um, just you know, real quickly, I mean, let's just so, uh, and, and audience probably knows the answer to this question, but who, who's your favorite frontiersman? <laughs> you know, I went through. I, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm gonna pick someone that no one would expect, something kind of different to think about. Uh -huh. uh, it's James Harrod. It's, <laughs> I'm stuck with that. just because I guess where I grew up. Uh, where I did and, and the connection he's had, but also some of those guys that came with him, uh, Abraham Chaplin, I think about, uh, who gave the Chaplin River its name that flows through uh, Washington County as well. Uh, so mainly because he and Herod contrast. Herod is this great leader that you hear about, and he disappears mysteriously right on the cusp of statehood, and uh, that kind of adds to the mystery. Whereas Chaplin is here in those early days, he ends up back in Virginia for you for a few years. And he comes back to Mercer County. He settles there and as an old man ends up telling his story, whether it was through uh, land depositions and that kind of thing. So you get to see both sides of that, the people who made it and the people who, who shed their lives. So those guys get my top two votes. Well, that's, that sounds good to me. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no uh, debate there. Um, now, I guess if uh, it's probably a, you know, done deal. People probably know who I would say. Um, Benjamin Logan definitely is probably my, my top one. Um, he, you know, again, it's a lot of similarities to you. Grew up around the area. Uh, I've always wanted to have that uh, Fort Logan, which is finally, you know, under construction, almost complete. Um, and having all those things and, you know, really reading his biography opened up a lot more information that I didn't know. And hopefully uh, listeners uh, didn't know about or, or, or aware of now, uh, because, you know, he, he again, he talked about, you know, Heron, Boone, easy ones that people know about. And he's, he's pretty much that third one, you know, the third one that people, uh, don't know about, but yet was here just about, you know, just about as long as they were and, and so forth. Uh, uh, him and Heron kind of had similar fates as in they, they died a little earlier than expected. Uh, Boone of course gets the biography and so forth. Uh, but uh, definitely probably one of my uh, top ones. Uh, the other one I would say, or well, it definitely is my top one, I should say. Uh, Michael Stoner is another one, those that kind of we talked about a while, uh, a few episodes ago, that really um, has a different story. You know, he was there through it all, but doesn't have that um, connection or, or, or that historical uh, biography that kind of, you know, 
lays it out there for everybody else. Um, now, um, another question here: who, who, who was you? Who did you learn the most about, or, or who was the one that you didn't know about? But you, after we've done all these episodes, the, the one was like, man, that's a that's an interesting uh, fella or person or whatever. Yeah, that, that's an interesting question because it's almost like, uh, not to go too far off the tracks, but it's like the moon landing. Everyone's heard of Neil Armstrong, but when you realize there are three people in the pod, you know, it's like that second tier of individuals kind of gets forgotten. Mm-hmm. And so there, it was probably a tie. You know, I learned a lot about James Estel. Uh, I learned uh, quite a bit. I, I learned a lot about Logan, who I thought I knew a good deal about. But as we researched that and, and moved on that, um, some of those guys, I think they were here just for a, a brief glimpse of time um, that don't have you know, the storied background uh, really stuck out to me. Uh, some of those guys I had known a little bit about. I think Green Clay was a good one that we covered that most uh, folks wouldn't know about. I only knew about him because of, of War of 1812 and that sort of research. Um, but I would say, yeah, to ask some of these guys that I thought I knew but was really surprised in the end. Yeah. Um, one that stands out for me would be like John Floyd. I you know, didn't really know yeah. anything much about him. You hear a bunch about him. Uh, but then being able to kind of get his background and kind of you see kind of with a player that he was in in the whole land grant, uh, the whole surveying and how important he was. And then, again, met a uh, – uh, a, a quicker end uh, in, in his yeah. life there, and you kind of have that wondering: what if he'd have survived longer? You know, how much more impact would he have had? Um, that that that's probably probably the most one, uh, or the one that I kind of uh, enjoyed learning more about. Because again, in everything, but not really a lot known about him. Um, but overall, right, uh, pretty interesting dude. What's your most forever a footnote? It seems. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the, next thing, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll ask this light, lightly because you know I was gonna say what what is the you know big events that you kind of feel like well this this was the big event of the frontier, but I don't know. There, there, there's a lot of them. It's hard to choose. And, and yeah. if we're jumping around, well, I'll pre- preface this as well. You know, as we talked about each one of these frontiersmen in, in like more of a, a specific to their life. You know, they all lived parallel in many ways. You know, a lot of these events they were all at, a lot of these uh, big things, uh, developments, they they kind of had a, a hand or foot in. Uh, I guess, is that right, hand or foot, or just hand in? I think both would work. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, they got but, their foot uh, in the door, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, like, you know, overall, though, what's some of the big, big events or, or different things? And, and we don't have to rank them or anything with that. We can just, you know, talk about them. If I had to pick one thing above all else that, that represents this period in my mind, it's the year 1777. You know, we, we talked about it being nicknamed the Bloody Sevens. And what you see before that, there are a number of treaties that take place. There's a treaty of Sycamore Shoals. There's, there's a number of treaties where uh, really colonists, because they were colonists at that point, felt like they had the right finally to settle beyond the mountains. And Kentucky was ground zero for that. So you see people coming in, and then in the 1790s and later, you just see this population explosion in Kentucky. But in between those two periods, you have uh, the American Revolution. And, you know, by 1777, you're down to a very few posts. Not to keep mentioning the same people we've all mentioned already, but, you know, Logan Station, Fort Herod, and Boonesboro. Uh, you know, if those places fall, I would, it's all speculation, but I would wager if one of them fell, the others are going to be in such dire straits that Kentucky may have collapsed and the U.S. is going to win the revolution. It's not going to affect that, but it could have resulted in the Mississippi River being in British hands. It could have resulted in uh, the border between Canada and the U.S. being the Ohio River because you no longer have people like George Rogers Clark to go you know, westward and, and secure Illinois. So I would say the, the seminal event in that period is 1777. Um, but, you know, there's, like you said, there are so many times where it seemed like they were at a crisis. Uh, you could point to the powder run that brought gunpowder from Pennsylvania and Virginia down the uh, river to the Kentucky settlements that Herod and those guys picked up at the powder run. Uh, I mean, there are so many examples of times where things really could have gone south. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I agree. Um, that that was a you know, very, very big year, very uh, important. Uh, 
just in, in the change of the tide, even to say it that way. Um, uh, I kind of think, yeah. you know, the Battle of Blue Licks was, was definitely a, a moment that, that everybody kind of uh, knows about who, who kind of studies any kind of Kentucky history. Uh, and it's a big part of the American Revolution, but nobody really knows about that. Uh, did it really, you know, change or, or influence anything in a big scheme? Uh, maybe not, but like for the people here, that was a big, big thing. I mean, when you go back and look at the maps that were made during that time, Blue Blue Licks is marked. You know, big battle here, Blue yeah. Licks. You know, uh, that was a very big thing for the people of that time. Um, yeah, I kind of think too. You know, the founding of uh, you think about Louisville and um, the falls of the Ohio, all those things going on, and each, of course, you know, Boothboro, uh, Stanford, and, and Harrodsburg, and all those places are popping up. Uh, that those were all big time moments. Um, but uh, and, and again, you know, we could talk about them all over again, but we probably probably shouldn't. Uh, um, one more thing, I guess, before we wrap everything up, um, what um, what's I mean, your overall th- thought about just what was going on in the state of Kentucky during this time. If, if I had to sum it all up in one thought, I think this is something that I, w- I wish more history books would cover is that, you know, this, Kentucky, especially during this period, it gets thought of as an afterthought. We've got the American revolution going on and then you've got these forts out here, or you've got American independence developing. And then you've got these people out here. It almost seems like they were untouched by it to read some of the things that people write. But really, the Ohio Valley, which at this period pretty much means Kentucky, mm-hmm. uh, is its own world. Um, you know, you've got those colonies that have existed since 1607. That's when Jamestown's founded to the east of the mountains. And they have constantly looked to Europe for trade, for military allies, for political guidance. Uh, you know, that's just the way it was. And even after the revolution takes place, trade and things like that are looking across the Atlantic Ocean. But when you get over the mountains, you know, Kentucky does export a lot of goods down um, the Ohio, into the Mississippi eventually, and reach New Orleans. But this is really a different world. You have people who are living almost entirely off what they raise. They're, they're wearing clothes that are homespun. You have American democracy that's developing in a way that's kind of unique, and it's insulated a little bit, not all the way, but insulated a little from Europe and those influences. So the thing I would lean towards, and again, I might be biased in this being a Kentuckian, but the settlement of Kentucky opens up a new era in American history where we are no longer um, the, the outcast or the colonies of Europe. We are America, and it launches us forward into what would come down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and kind of that thing that I, I always kind of feel like with you know, other people who may not be from Kentucky or maybe born in Kentucky, but people who moved out west, like people in Nebraska, Minnesota, you know, those states out west, you know, they probably have a connection somewhere down the line. Somebody came through Kentucky, maybe settled for a year or so, maybe settled for 10 years, and then their kids moved off or they stayed, you know, uh, those ancestors, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to be cliche about it, but you know, I, I feel like everybody's history is Kentucky's history, you know. Uh, Absolutely. But uh, just the, that changing that, that uh, you know, the, 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 what was going on, that big moment. And people don't, you know, like you said, they brush over it in the history books and don't really like, give it too too much credit to say, you know, Kentucky was just this big place. They don't really give it that, you know, how much impact Kentucky's history, especially during that first, those first uh, you know, few decades, um, really right. set the stage for everything else, you know, the, to come in American history. Um, but, you know, we may be a little biased, but that's okay. <laughs> maybe a little bit. yeah yeah so well that is uh where we're going to wrap this up at um you know we got a lot of good stuff coming up here in the next few few months few um uh, uh well weeks even uh we got a few uh, county episodes and so forth um uh, uh, some night rider stuff that we recorded many moons ago <laughs> right uh, but, uh, you know, some good stuff for people to check out and listen to. Uh, and then uh, we're going to move on to the uh, New Republic. We're going to focus on Kentucky and that first uh, few decades of being a state. So 
A lot of good stuff. Anything else? Absolutely. I think that's it. You know, it's a fascinating period, but uh, I think what we're about to go into is just as exciting. So I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Yep. Me too. Um, well, everybody, uh, thanks for uh, listening and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Welcome to the Kentucky History Channel, where we strive to bring you all the Kentucky history content you want and you deserve. Kentucky is a part of all of us, and we plan on covering all the history we can, from Pike County to Fulton County, from Louisville to Harlan. Here on our YouTube channel, you can find many videos dedicated to different events, people, governors, and places in Kentucky. There's something for everybody. While you're here, if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification button so you get notified anytime new Kentucky history is available. And if you want to support the channel, we have a Patreon page as well or patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. You've probably heard about Daniel Boone, but what about the rest of the frontiersmen who came to Kentucky and settled? That's what we want to bring to the Kentucky History Channel. The stories of the untold, the stories of those forgotten. One thing to expect on our channel is great Kentucky content. Some stories that you've never heard of. The Knight Riders, who began in western Kentucky. Bloody Monday, the riots in Louisville. the assassination of Governor Goebel, the only governor ever assassinated in the United States. Stories from all over Kentucky, stories that are unforgettable once you've heard them. You can find out who counties in Kentucky are named after and how your county got started. From beginning to end, we plan to document every county in Kentucky, all 120. Reach out to us on all of our social media platforms. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And also leave a comment on one of our YouTube videos. You can also check out our podcast episodes. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many more. We're always seeking to find more Kentucky history so we can bring it to you. The viewers, the listeners, we want all the stories and all the events from Kentucky's great history to be told and shared everywhere.